All right, hey everyone, welcome back to Duo Decimal Division. My name's Eric Larson, and now we're gonna continue in this short series of videos about why numerals look the way that they do. And now I'm gonna look, or we're gonna look at the numeral that represents the number three. So before we go any farther, I just wanna reiterate what I have established so far, I think, is that somebody has designed these numerals and they were using this particular geometric pattern right here. So what I'm gonna do is just talk a little bit more about this pattern before I go on and show you why the numeral three looks the way it does. So we already figured out or ascertained that the circles here are consecutive square root radiuses. So the first one's a radius of one. This is the distance right here, the radius from the center to the outside edge. Second circle has a radius of the square root of two. Third circle has a radius of the square root of three and so on. So another aspect of this design here or this uh, pattern or chart, however you want to call it, is that the inside circle, this one right here, the area, the area of that circle. Now we know that the formula for the area is equals pi r squared. So pi, so r squared was one, squared is one, so just pi times one or one pi. So this area is sort of when you, is the area of pi, that one middle circle. So the next circle out, then it's bigger. If we just look in that whole circle, we see that's the square root of two. Is the radius so it's that squared equals two so we're gonna have two pi is the area of that second circle so we know that if the first circle is the area of one pi then this second band is also one pi making it two pi together and you can see right away we're gonna, each of these bands is the area of one pi it's all the same area for each band they just get thinner as it gets as the circle underneath that they're sort of going around is bigger larger so we're spreading this pi one pi area in all of these bands as we get larger and larger. So that's kind of interesting. So just the reason I'm sharing that is that I, I'm, you know, to you, I want you to know that I wasn't able or haven't, still haven't been able to find this diagram on the internet. To me, it seems like it would be very kind of famous or at least well-known or foundational within the math community or the math world. And I'm just nothing. The closest I've got is something called the spiral of Theodorus, where he uses this diagram to kind of generate spirals. It's a Greek guy. But other than that, nothing at all. So I'm really surprised. Pi being one of the most famous numbers, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, one of those famous formulas. They're both right in here. The consecutive square roots, all those circles, x, y coordinate plane, and just nothing. So I'm, you know, that's why I haven't been able to really give this diagram a name because I don't really know. So I'm sort of unofficially calling it the consecutive square root radius concentric circle series. So that's a bit of a mouthful but that really describes what that is. So if anyone out there can find this and let me know what more about it, I'd be happy to get that information. Okay, so now what I want to do is introduce, like I said, one more ingredient for these numerals that we're making. So far as you can see, we used either the circle or part of the circle, like say the nine was this whole circle, and then one of these lines right here, I'm just tracing over it. The eight, we took the, uh, the uh, this circle right here, the, the square root uh, four radius, basically two radius, so the whole diameter was four, and we just slid it up two and drew a circle, and we slid it down two. So those two, those two diameter four circles added together made a total of eight. The five also was part of this circle, then up two and over three. So we're just always tracing what was on here. For the two, we traced that circle and we traced this bottom line, but I had to add, I had to draw over empty space there. So what I should do now, I wanna have all the ingredients for the circles or for the numerals on this diagram. So I'm gonna draw basically that square root two line, you know, 45 degree line. And the same, I'll just you know, do those two 45 degree lines. And then I add, want to add one more sort of section of degree lines, although not really degree lines, or it may cause a bit of controversy here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a line that looks very much like the 30 degree line, which really would be the next angle that you'd want to introduce if you're introducing angles. If you go over one and up 0.7, okay, over one and up 0.7. Or up one and over 0.7 and the distance between those two points is going to be 0.5 root 2. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to, okay, so we're going to, I finish with this, I'm going to show you another diagram. There we go. So this is a, also a base 12 diagram and that the distance from there to there is 12. 
zero to one. And so 0.7, it's 0.7, uh, is a certain relationship there. Over one, up 0.7, or up one, over 0.7. This distance is 0.5 root two. This distance here is also 0.5 root two. So I've drawn a, a dodecagon, a 12-sided shape, and all these shapes are 0.5 root two. And then at this next section, these are all uh, uh, two times 0.5 root two. And then here it's three times 0.5 root two, four times, and so on. So that just keeps getting bigger and bigger, creating these this, this pattern right here. So I'm gonna get more into that pattern later. I just wanted to show it to you because it's very relevant to the degree lines, which are also something that were designed by someone using base 12 geometry. So I'm gonna go into those more. We're kind of doing a little fork in the road here. I just want you to know this is the other fork. We're gonna go into this, these degree lines, but now I'm gonna show you those lines, how they apply to the numerals, the design of the numerals. Okay, so now we're gonna do, and let me show you this. So this is basically both of those two charts put on top of each other. You have, you have all the uh, square root radius circles. Then we have these uh, degree lines going out here on top of the XY coordinate plane. So now we've got all the ingredients that we need. There's the 45 degree. We use that for the numeral two and the numeral six. So now we're going to use this line right here. Again, with the rise over run of one and then over 0.7, and we're going to use that for the numeral that represents the number three. So here we go. So it's, okay, we'll just quickly something about the numeral that represents the number three. That particular circle doesn't intersect the grid on any lattice points, same as the six. So these lattice points are the spots where the x y coordinate plane or x y lines intersect each other. Here's the three right here doesn't hit any points, but we are gonna start right there. And that's the third circle, one, two, three, with this radius square root of three. And I'm just gonna draw a line from there and I'm gonna trace this to this point right here. So I'm gonna write down the coordinates for that spot. It's over 1.9, the X is 1.9, and the Y is one, two, three. So right away, we have our, we have a three. And also just to note from this lattice point right there going over this way, it's 0 0.03, 0 0.03, you know, 0.9 plus 0 0.03, or sorry, it's just 0 0.3, not 0 0.3, just 0 0.3. 0 0.9 plus 0 0.3 equals two, that's that point there. So there's a 0 0.3 gap similar to how with the numeral that represented number six, there was a uh, 0.6 decimal happening but here we can also just go right across here, one, two, three, and this is minus 1.3 and three. So the length of that line is three. So there we have the value of the number incorporated in the design of the numeral. And you can see that's kind of, this shape we got here is almost like the, the number two turned upside down. You know, you've got that same, you know, the baseline then the angle going to the curve. And now I'm just gonna trace again, the circle. And I'm gonna stop it right there. On the same, I'm gonna say 30 degree line, although it's not quite. And the reason I'm saying it's not quite is if you start to figure out the, 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 the dimensions there, it doesn't work out to square root of three, one square root of four, just for you who, people who are paying attention. So this point here, like the, the numeral for the six, I just went outside of that circle a little bit and had the, uh, there it was the 1.9 and uh, minus 1.9 for those coordinates, root two, but here we're off a little bit. So if there's a, there is a point just outside that is part of this line, this because this line also can go over 0.1 and up 0 0.07. You could really go very small increments of going over in one. So doing that up here, you get the point, point A6 and 1.6. So remember, we're counting in duodecimal, so it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, and then the 10. So that's what, that's what this is, point A6 and then 1.6. So you sort of go over here, 1, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, and then a half, and then you go up, and that's where we are. That's where we are up there. 
for that point and then go up. So uh, things to note, kind of interesting, two root three in duodecimal equals the square root of 10. Nice and, nice and simple somehow that that works out in base. This is like a dual decimal thing. Okay, so we can figure out the, this, the length from the center to there. This spot is exactly halfway. So we have like half kind of empty space and half full space, but this is bigger than two root three. We can figure that out by, um, well, you know what? I'm gonna let you figure that out because you've got a lot of video already. I didn't want to get too much into the math. You just, I just want to show you why the numeral three looks the way it does and give you a little bit more information. So that's that point, that point, that point there. We got the point three in the corner there. If you want to see a good example of this particular numeral, you can look on the barcodes of things. Not all of them, but some do use this flat top numeral three and the five also, you can see good examples of some of these numerals in their kind of geometric form. All right, so hope you enjoyed this video and now we've got this new angle. We're gonna keep using that in the rest of the numerals. So the next one's gonna be the numeral that represents the number four. Thanks for watching. Hope you can join me for that next one. Bye for now.